Assalamu alaikum and hello, everybody. Uh, we go back to Othello. We are almost uh, done with uh, the whole play. Today we do act uh, four, scene three, and act uh, five, scene one, which means we'll be only having one uh, scene to go. It's the most important uh, scene uh, of all scenes. It's the last scene. We've seen what happened in Hamlet's last scene. But unlike uh, uh, Hamlet, Othello didn't have uh, people dying before the play, sometime in the middle of the play, and uh, you know, heading towards the last scene, the massacre. So far, we ha we have no deaths. Four acts, nobody dies. Actually, nobody comes close to dying. You see what happens in Act Five. So in Act uh, Four, we see Othello. Uh, ordering uh, his Demona to go back to their uh, home and to dismiss all her maids and attendants, something very weird, very strange. He, he never does that. Which again uh, intensifies the suspense, intensifies the uh, anticipation, creates uh, for uh, shadowing for what uh, to come yet. And it's really very disheartening this uh, cold relationship between uh, Desdemona and Othello in, in, in Act 4, especially after what has happened, after he slapped her. Uh, and we've seen how submissive and meek she is. Now for many audiences now, especially feminists and women, they would deplore this. They would dislike Desdemona for being too peaceful, too submissive, too meek. But remember, in Elizabethan England, many people must have loved her more for being beautiful, for being obedient to her husband, for not re repelling him, not rebelling against him. So see how when time changes, our understanding of literature uh, changes. The, literature changes depending on time and place when you read. Even the same reader could read the same text differently depending on the mood or the time or your age, whether you're young or not. That's why I always uh, advise my students to come face to face with the text, to live with the text, to analyze the text for yourself. You go online and you read stuff, you read stuff written by people other than you, uh, Christians, American, Chinese, Indian, Russian. What can you bring to the, to the text as a Palestinian, as a young man, young woman living in, in Palestine, as a Muslim living in, living in Palestine, in Gaza, for example, in the Middle East, being non-white, non-European, non-Christian. So, uh, uh, oh, this Demona, look at how obedient he is. He just, before he tells her what to do, she interrupts him, my Lord, my lords, like, you just order me. You just tell me whatever you want and I'll do it. Get you to bed on the instant and I will uh, be returned uh, forthwith. Dismiss your attendant there. Lock it, be done. Please do it. I will, my lord. So obedient, so cool, so nice. Now, I want you again to go and read the analysis in the, in the book. Uh, we have, for the first time, a conversation between two female uh, women. Two uh, uh, women for the first time are alone on the stage and they're talking honestly, reflecting on what has happened. And uh, Shakespeare does this by again, giving uh, the audience a clear, a stark difference between this Demona with her inexperience, her naivety, and Emilia, the experienced woman, the woman who, ha who must have seen a lot, who must have experienced a lot, at least being married to Iago must have made some, uh, some, some difference. We've seen her uh, more vul vulgar in a sense, more uh, blunt, uh, defending herself at least, uh, accusing uh, 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 men exactly the way men accuse women. And Again, the image of this demon being innocent and pure and white continues here. Remember, in Elizabethan England, this must have been 
viewed as positive by the audience because a woman's duty was to listen to her husband, to obey her husband. But many people nowadays would be very angry at her. Come on, you should have done something. Do something about it. For God's sakes, he just slapped you. He's accusing you of the worst possible thing a man could accuse his wife, his wife of. So all one here says, the opening uh, part of the scene, good faith, how foolish are our minds. If I do die before thee, breathe thee, shroud me in one of those same sheets. Yeah? Uh, bed sheets here. And look at the foreshadowing, because we're all waiting for what to come next. If I die, says this Demona. And if she's not saying, if I, if I do die, if I if I died, usually you say, if I died, so something unlikely. But she says and she feels it. A woman is always this close to death. Come on, you talk. And then this Demona uh, is, with Shakespeare giving us more foreshadowing here. Foreshadowing has become is the anticipation. What, what to come here is significant. Shakespeare gives us many things for us to, to prepare us for the final scene. She tells of a maid that her mother had, whose name was Barbary, who again, whose story is very similar to that of this Demona. Somebody loved her, but then he went crazy and he no longer loved her, which made her very sad, very uh, uh, possibly, uh, I don't want to say angry, but uh, uh, in a sense, yeah, sad. Why can't I think of other synonyms as, uh, other than sad? Uh, and she kept singing uh, the Willow song. And she says this, this woman says, I can't keep this song away from my mind. She, it's haunting me. Barbary is haunting me. The song is haunting me. And she keeps singing the song. And actually she's going to sing the song. Now, classically, uh, the Willow trees uh, are usually associated with sadness, with sorrow with pain, with suffering. And again, uh, it says here in the book that this, is, this isn't an original text that Shakespeare composed. It, was, uh, uh, it existed around that time, the time the play was, was composed. So Shakespeare must have lifted it from here uh, or there. But again, this is, this is a woman who suffered a lot until, uh, until she died. She died singing a song of pain, of suffering, of, of loss. And again, remember indicating how women are always dependent on their men. If the man is no longer there, women die. They can't live independent of men. And then I don't know why they mentioned this. They bring Rodrigo, I don't know why this demona. So no, unpin me here. This Ludovico is a proper man. He's a good man. Why? I, I don't know how, how this fits here. I didn't give it much thought, but I love this part because this is the part where uh, Shakespeare mentions Palestine. Not that it makes any, any difference to us as Palestinians, but it's good, it's cool to see Palestine written here and there. So a very handsome man. He speaks well, he's a good man. He's, he's eloquent, he's articulate, he's also handsome. And Emilia says, I know a lady in Venice would have walked barefoot to Palestine for a touch of his nether lip. Uh, I just want, I'm quoting this so you enjoy how Shakespeare is uh, 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 saying Palestine. But again, Palestine at that time, because at that time, not sure what, when this place is historically placed, but when we talk about Palestine, when Muslims were controlling Palestine and the Ottomans and everything, it wasn't something easy or safe for somebody to walk, not to ride or to sail, to walk and barefoot. Not to London, not to any other place, but to Palestine for a touch of his Netherlands. I like this. And then this Demona sings the sycamore. Do you know the sycamore tree? Sycamore tree, Shajarati Lil Jumez. She keeps singing. It's good to know this word because we have it in, uh, in Palestine. It's very famous in Asaf. Many have been uh, uh, uprooted recently in the past uh, two decades. 
she, she, she said, look at the thing, the song, how, 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 how heartbreaking it is. A poor soul that saw, sat sighing by a sycamore tree, seeing all a green willow, her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee, saying willow, 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 even the sound of willow, 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 somebody wailing and weeping. The fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moans. Even, even the stream, even the water, the river is also singing. Sing willow, willow, willow. Her salt tears fell from her and softened the stones. Even the stones moved. Lay by thee, sing willow, 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 by thee, hide thee. He'll come anon, sing all a green willow, willow must be my garland. Let nobody blame him, his corn I approve. Like, look at it again. This is exactly what is this is what this demon is doing. She is not blaming Othello. Number one, she says, I don't want to blame him because I chose him. And then because of who I am, it's not good for a woman to complain, to accuse her husband, which is again very submissive and very uh, dismissed nowadays. Nay, that's not next, hark, who is that knocks? It's a beautiful song and heartbreaking. And then they talk about duty and revenge and with her, look at how pure and innocent this demon is. She asks, she talks about, is it really true that there are women who cheat on their husbands? I, it's unimaginable. I remember when she couldn't even mention the word prostitute because the word itself to her is disgusting. A woman shouldn't be doing this. And doing the deed is even worse, far worse. Look at how innocent he is. She can't imagine, imagine women cheating on their husband, being infidel. It's like, really? Women do this? And these people, I mean, yeah, the experienced one, yeah, of course, yeah. And then, would you do this? Let's see how this goes. Again, creating this chasm between this demona, the other, the upper class, pure woman, innocent, submissive, good to her husband, who would never do nothing to hurt, to hurt him or his legacy or reputation. But Emilia, who's more practical middle-class woman who could do some wrong in order to get a greater right. I have heard it said so, oh, these men, these men, dost thou in conscience think, tell me, Emilia, that there be women do abuse their husbands in such gross kind? It's impossible, I can't even think about it. There be some such, no question, of course there are. Wouldst thou do such a deed and then becomes more personal here. Would you do it? Why wouldn't you? A question with a question. like, wouldn't you? Like, it's only natural for people, for men, for women to cheat, to be. No, by this heavenly light. No, I would never do this. And then Emilia says, by my trust, uh, she's talking about here, about two situations here and in the next extract. She says, okay, I can do it on, on two occasions. If the, if the result, if I get something very, something great in return, if I achieve by, by cheating on my husband, if I achieve something great, I can do it. And two, to take revenge. If my husband does it, I can do it. That's some kind of revenge. And again, this demona is like disgusting at this thing. And like again, how, how Shakespeare is preparing us to the last scene, presenting us, even if you didn't like what this demona did, being very passive, at least now she's honest, she's fiddle, she is, uh, she is uh, true to her husband, she's true, she's pure, she's almost an angel. By my trust, I think I should and do it when I had done it. If I, I, I would do it in a particular situation on a particular occasion and then, I can fix it in a way, if I can. I wouldn't do such a thing for a joint ring, nor for measures of loan, nor for gowns, uh, pitical coats, nor caps, nor any pity exhibition. I wouldn't do this for stupid little pity things, but for all the whole world. I do it for great things. Pity who? I don't know what this word is. Wouldn't, wouldn't make her husband cuckold to make him a monarch. It's like, I would do this to make my husband rise in this life in the world, like to make him a king, for example. I would venture purgatory for it. 
Purgatory is the place between the, when, when somebody dies and, uh, and, and hell. Between the grave and hell, we've seen uh, hell or heaven. Uh, uh, the ghost in Hamlet was lurking in purgatory, propelled, where he's being cleansed. Shrew me if I would do such a, a, a wrong for the whole world. I wouldn't, this demon say, do this for the whole for the whole. Why? The wrong is but a wrong in the world. And having the world, look at this philosophical explanation and justification. He says, if I would get the whole world in return for cheating, if I own the world, I can fix the cheating so it's not cheating, it's not it's okay. The wrong is but a wrong in the world, and having the world for your labor, it is a wrong in your own world. So you own the world. If this wrong you've done is in a world you own, then you might quickly make it, make it right. I don't know whether you get this or not, but again, this is how people justify doing wrong deeds. I don't think there is such, the, see, she insists, the Simona, uh, there is any such woman. I and mean, Emilia, yes, a dozen as many is the vantage as wood store the world they played for but i do think it is their husband's fault the men are to blame if the woman if the, if the women cheat if wives do fall say that they slack their duties and pour our creatures into foreign laps or always again still yeah despite the fact that this, uh, emilia says the women can do wrong they are equal it's not because some people would say women uh, are just totally subordinate to men and they wouldn't even be smart enough to do such a thing. Emilia is saying this, but still women uh, are inferior to men because it always, it all depends on, on men. And then she goes on and talks about how uh, this, she would do it for uh, revenge as husbands do wrong women would also uh, do wrong. Yes, he says, why we have goals and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know, look at this, it's like public speech. Let husbands know the wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates, bo both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they, when, they, when they change us for others? Is it sport? Are we sport to them? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is it frailty that thus errs? It is so too, and have not we affections, desires for sport and frailty as men? If, if men, when they do wrong, claim to be, because you know, they're weak, the flesh is weak, they are frail, we do have the same thing, then let them use us well, else let them know the else we do, the else instruct us so. Beautiful. The, the else, the problem, the wrong deeds men do guide us, instruct us, and teach us to do likewise. But the, the, again, this demona insists she wouldn't do such a thing. She wouldn't tarnish the, the name of her husband. That, Women can never, good women can never do that. Okay, if anybody wants to say something before we move to the uh, last two points uh, in, uh, in the next scene. Anybody wants to write, uh, to suggest? Anybody? Tired. Okay. So uh, at the, again, we move to Act Five. Finally, uh, Act Five has two scenes: Scene One and Scene Two. Uh, scene One is a short uh, scene. Uh, just one thing happens here. I remember Iago was planning to have 
he promised Othello to kill Cassio. He pushed Rodrigo, planned for Rodrigo to kill Cassio. This is what happens. Now, we know that Rodrigo is clumsy and awkward and stupid and easily uh, tricked by Iago, but come again. Everybody is tricked by Iago and is tricked easily. So he tells him what to do, how to kill Cassio. He fails to do this. Uh, Iago injures Cassio. Uh, in, in, it was dark, he, he didn't see this. And he runs away when he comes. Both Cassio and Ia and, uh, and Rodrigo are injured. And afraid that Rodrigo might tell the truth, Cassio pretends that he is, def uh, Iago pretends that he's defending Cassio and he kills Rodrigo, Rodrigo and then later, oh my God, this is Rodrigo. I didn't know that this is Rodrigo. He's a friend of mine. Why did he do this? And then we have Bianca again, and a really interesting uh, dialogue uh, between Emilia and, uh, and Cassio, and Emilia and uh, Bianca. Okay, so this is how Iago is giving the instructions. Look at this. He has stand behind this bulk. Everything is well prepared and planned, organized straight. Will he come where thy good rapier? You know, rapier in Hamlet, the, the sword. Bear, get it ready. Just don't keep it. Uh, and put it home. Be ready. Quick, quick, fear nothing. I'll be at thy elbow. elbow. I'll, don't worry. It makes us, or it mars us. You will either kill him, or we will be exposed. Think on that, and fix most firm thy resolution. And then Rodrigo says, be near at hand. I may miscarry in it. I, 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 may, I may fail. Um, you know? And of course, he fails. He tries to stab. But Cassio is a, is a soldier. He's a leader. He's a commander. And he is he's stabbed by uh, Rodrigo, by Cassio himself. So when there was a noise, uh, after both were injured, uh, nobody died on the spot. They were uh, just bleeding, and it was like, oh, murder, murder, I'm slain. Uh, Othello thinks that, ah, the voice of Cassio, Iago keeps his word. Look at this, you know, he keeps insisting on praising Iago. I'm not sure how many times he did this in the whole play. Oh, villain that I am, it is even so. Oh, help, ho, oh, light, a surgeon. Othello, tis he, oh, brave Iago, honest and just, that has such noble sense of thy friend's wrong. You are avenging me. Thou teaches me, you are my teacher. You teach me how to be a good friend. Many on your dear lies dead, and your unblessed fate highs. Trumpet, I come again, boiling for anger against uh, this demona because. This is, if Cassio is dead, it's coming to uh, for uh, this demona. Force of my heart, those charms, thine eyes are blotted. Thy bed, lust stained, shall with lust's blood be spotted. I'll spill my blood. I'm coming to you, this demona. But he doesn't use her name. He used the, the word strumpet, meaning, meaning a prostitute. And when, when everybody shows up, Iago, who's there? Whose noise is this that cries, oh, murder? That's, and then Cassio says, two people attacked me. One of them ran away, and one of them, I injured one of them. And Iago, realizing that Rodrigo is alive but injured, he attacks him. Oh, murder, slave, oh, villain. And he stabs Rodrigo because, again, he doesn't. Then uh, Iago doesn't take uh, prisoners. He just kills. If he lives, he will uh, probably, Rodrigo could expose, could easily expose Iago. We've seen how he threatened him last time, last, uh, last scene. And he st st stabs and kills Rodrigo. Rodrigo dies. Oh, damned Iago, oh, inhuman dog. And I know many people use this uh, to describe, but nobody so far thinks of Iago as such. Only stupid, clumsy, awkward Rodrigo knows Iago for the villain, this honest traitor he is. Inhuman dog, oh damn Iago. 
but again it's, it's gone this is the first uh, death in the whole play it comes in act five scene one and Iago does it as a necessary kill Cassie could have been killed but he, he is not killed he doesn't get killed and then the last uh, uh, bit Look at this interesting thing. When Bianca shows, she she really, really shows how much she loves Cassio and cares about him. She feels that, oh, he said, oh, Cassio, Cassio, Cassio. Now, again, Iago is afraid that Bian Bianca might probably t talk to somebody, tell somebody that she loves, uh, what's his name, uh, Cassio. She might tell Othello that she is in love with him, she, that she's in a relationship. Uh, she never saw, for example, this demon or something. She doesn't know anything about it. And now Iago wants, look at how he condescendingly talk, talks about her, always describing her as a prostitute, uh, uh, accusing her of having a hand in the death of Cassio, insinuating that she might be behind his death. Gentlemen all, I do suspect this trash to be a party in this injury. Patience a while. I'm not sure if he says the, the trash, the Bianca, possibly Bianca or Rodrigo. Now he doesn't know that he pretends that this, he doesn't know who he just stabbed. Patience a while. Good, Cass, you come, come, lend me a light. Know we this face or no? Do we know this man I just stabbed here who tried to kill Cass? You alas, my friend, my dear countryman. Rodrigo, no. Yes, sure. Oh, heaven, Rodrigo, I have just killed. Rodrigo, why, why, why would he want to kill Cassio? Uh, Cassio, do you know him? He says, no, I've never seen him in my life, this man. And again, finally, he looks at, look at uh, how cunning he is, at Bianca. What? Look, you, of course he's pale. He just saw her boyfriend injured, almost dying, bleeding. Ah, you look pale, ah. So he takes it as a sign of com that she's complicit here. Oh, bear him out on the air, Cassio Drigo are born off. Stay, you good gentlemen. Look, you pale mistress. Ah, why? Hmm, I'm doubting, I'm smelling a rat. Do you perceive the ghastness of her eye, Shefin? Ah, oh, she's hiding something. Nay, if you stare, we shall hear more anon. Behold her well, I pray you look upon her. Do you see, gentlemen? Any guiltiness will speak though tongues were out of use even if people don't speak don't confess guiltiness will speak i think this is the perfect equivalence here guiltiness will speak can't be killing the cell counter, I don't know where it is. I'll see in a, in a bit. And now again, he uses, he keeps using the word uh, trash and prostitute to talk to about Bianca. And then Emilia, remember, Emilia just the, the previous scene, she was like, okay, I would cheat on my husband if I get something great in return. I would do it. If I want to make my husband a monarch, a king, I would do it to take revenge. I do it just to prove, to make a point. And now she pretends to be the honest. There is some, uh, there's some air of superiority here. She pretends to be gentle and cool and muhtarama. And then she looks down upon Bianca. Look at the dramatic irony again. This is, I'm not sure. There is a text filled with dramatic irony like we have here in Othello. And again, dramatic irony is when the audience knows more than people on the stage. Fie, fie, fie means like ex. Fie upon thee, it's trumpet. Fie. And Bianca says, I am no strumpet, but of life as honest as you that thus abuse me. And Abagilish Tehteram. As I, you compare yourself to me? <laughs> Fie upon thee. You compare yourself. You compare, how, how dare you compare yourself? 
at, at to me and then it ends it ends here preparing us for what to come uh, next just I'll, I'll share where is the uh, the text مين السبع اللي عرف لي الترجمة هذه؟ So this is where again Bianca, uh, Emilia pretends to be a moral woman, a hypocrite she is. And again, it's not good to be mean to people uh, below you. How would you translate this? When uh, or Iago, kind gentlemen, let's go see poor Cass you dressed. Anybody? Tati Alam al Ba. Ah, uh, the cat got your tongues, everybody. Have a terjum, have a terjum, male. Well, let's have a terjum here, grandfather. Can somebody give us a suggestion? Hello. No in the two alpha. What does, okay, I'll be more specific. What does the word uh, dressed mean here? No. متعلق من وين متعلق؟ كيف متعلق؟ Seen. Uh, dress, mish cast, cast, yani. Uh, dressing, what I commit dressing? The mother to Juru, who will have dressing. The Munasa would hot ala lakil, it hot the egg, it hot ali, she smoked the more dressing, Faldo. I have to be zabbat. Fahan. Uh, let's go see poor cast you dressed. خلينا نشوف لا نروح نزوره نروح نشوفه وهو إيش بضمد الجراح. Dressing اللي هي تض اللي هي عملية إنك أنت ضم تضميد الجراح. طيب uh, I'll stop here. If you have any question uh, or anything to say, please do. Uh, but uh, I don't ask you to prepare. Please read scene uh, Act uh, 5, scene 2. It's the last scene and it's really interesting. Actually, I'll stop here.
Thank you very much for the opportunity.